couple of years ago, probably three years ago now, we were kicking around ideas for new shows. We made uh, The Toy That Saved Christmas, which was our Christmas special, way, way back in 1996. So it was like show six. Yes, when we watch it now, we kind of go, ugh! Yeah. <laughs> there were only, you know, I mean, there were literally only ten of us in the whole company when we made um, that first Christmas special. So we decided it's time to do a new Christmas special. I tend to think a story is much more interesting and much less cliched if it's based on as much reality as possible. So before I started writing, we set it in time. Okay, it's 1880s. We set it geographically. It's London. Um, and then I started researching, you know, okay, what was going on in the 1880s in London? You know, what was the state of theater? What other contemporary kind of archetypal characters were there in England, you know, in that day? What, what could we use as a springboard for building a new Christmas story? And uh, the, the first thing that popped into my mind was Gilbert and Sullivan. Then it, it, we just got down to building out the story. It's like, okay, you know, Bob and Larry are Gilbert and Sullivan. Then what? We wanted to tell the story of Christmas, but in an interesting context, an unexpected context. Up till this point, Veggie Tales has been very dialogue heavy. You know, it's, you could almost uh, air our shows as radio shows and and still follow them. <laughs> pretty well because there's just not a whole lot of pure action partly because of the limitations of the characters not having arms and legs and not being able to wrestle or you know drive cars or things like that and then partly just because it's more expensive in CGI in particular to do action versus dialogue um, so but I wanted to change that on this one and really hit a story you know that pushed all the right buttons that that had funny dialogue but also had you know really really hilarious action into some really elaborate involved stuff and set pieces um, and I think you know we pulled it off really well. Phil was the, the the writer of the story and me being the producer you know I have to watch for the budget and and the schedule and and those type of things. Everyone okay back there? Ah! Good. And I'm reading through and the characters are riding this rocket car through London and I'm getting down to the bottom of the page and I see a sign, I'm reading that they see a sign, uh, the Crystal Palace, the world's largest glass structure. And it's sounding like they're going to, they turn toward it like they're going to drive through this glass structure. I'm reading this and I'm going, no, we can't, we can't do this. You know? And I turn the page and they go, and there he goes, oh, never mind. And they turn back and they go the other way. And I'm still, to this day, convinced that Phil did that just as a joke to me. <laughs> I can't prove it but I still think he did. On the budget that we were gonna have to come out on this show, that just would have been impossible. And so the owner of the company to write something into the script that would have been almost impossible to do would have been, you know, that's why I was, I was like, no! <laughs> but it turned out really well, and it's, it's a funny gag, and it really worked. It's that easy. Bob and Larry come to work, and they're usually a little bit late, which gives me time to get my coffee, and then they arrive on the set, and then yell action. They come out and do their stuff, and take, cut, print it. Right. I'm just always amazed by Phil and Mike, their writing. You never know what to expect. And when I first heard we were doing a Christmas special, I thought, oh, traditional Christmas special. Nah. My part uh, in putting the show together wasn't too complicated this time around. I was in the capable hands of Phil Vischer and Tim Hodge, Tim, uh, Tim directing and Phil writing the script. I just got to stand in the booth and scream a lot as Larry. Hey, so much what do we do? The what do we do? And, you know, sing, we are the fairy piece of Christmas, you know, like John claude So I had a great time doing uh, vocals in, in, you know, in for the story. Larry's Millward is trying to come up with a rhyme for possum. Schlossum, crossum. And he's going through every combination of letter, like going down the typewriter, you know, trying to find the first letter in each word that rhymes with, 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 with possum. It's, it was fun coming up with a few of those. Uh, Phil wrote most of that, but we, he wrote a number of words that rhyme with possum, but we needed more filler because the scene went on longer, so it was my turn to come up with a, a few of those. That -la 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 That's a, that was a good one. Everybody laughs. I did some research actually, I had a book on Gilbert and Sullivan and went through it and wrote down all of the names of their friends and contemporaries that are mentioned in the book. 
And so all the names in the show, you know, Bob's name is Monsieur Apple Tart. <laughs> Appy Tart. Larry's name is Lord Felt. Pa Grape is is Seymour Schwenk. Huh? And Seymour Schwenk, those are actually Gilbert and Sullivan's two middle names put together. Uh, Gilbert S Sullivan and Arthur Schwenk. Or is it the other way around? Gilbert Schwenk and Arthur Sullivan. I don't remember. The crew that handled the major portions of Star of Christmas were a lot of the animators that worked on the, the Penguins, the 321 Penguin show. And if you look around the sets, there are little homages to that. On the mantelpiece in uh, Bob's office, you see little Penguins figurines. Uh, but if you have to look really closely, or on the pole where the posters are, you can see the corner of one of the, the Penguins posters. You may not recognize it. It was uh, the, the red and yellow poster on there, but it was a little tip of the hat to all the guys that worked on penguins, came over and worked on veggies for the first time. There are some hidden little numbers uh, occasionally in our show. Uh, when Bob and Larry get arrested uh, and go to jail, they're, they're name placards. For, uh, the numbers at the bottom are not random numbers. That is actually, those are actually the birth dates of uh, Phil Vischer and Mike Naraki, the voices of Bob and Larry. I look over Junior's shoulder when he's performing the, the narration for the Christmas show, the, the, the placard behind it that has like hymn numbers. Ozer actually references the dates of one of our animators, uh, significant points in his life where he met his, his uh, now wife the, and their, their wedding anniversary. So he, he'll never forget that anniversary as long as he watches our show. I love the idea of creating an absolutely bizarre parody musical. And finally settled on the princess, you know, and the plumber, a musical spectacular. Um, and so then I was, I, you know, wrote it, did it all. I was watching a special on A and E, and it was a special on Walt Disney, a two-hour special on the life of Walt Disney. And they were talking about uh, some of the early cartoons, and they actually showed the marquee of a theater that one of the first Mickey Mouse cartoons was playing. And they panned down, and the name of the movie that was playing with it was The Princess and the Plumber. Uh. <laughs> and I just <laughs> I went, <laughs> what was that? And it's on screen for about three frames. It's like, what on earth? Is it, so I, I have no idea. I was afraid to even bring it up. Because <laughs> I don't know who's going to be suing me from the past. So we really felt that we had the opportunity with the Christmas film to tell the story of, okay, this is why Christians celebrate Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mr. Pincher. For me, that's the moment of the film because it shows what we have learned, you know, just kind of in theory, here's what it looks like in practice, you know, and Bob really got it. There is a story that can teach the world to love. You can't teach a man to love with spectacle, you know, with electric lights, with, with flash. The only way to teach him, really, to teach a man to love is the story of what God did for us.